I'd like to welcome you to the Passion of Ice podcast. This is Ice the Moore checking in. Another day, another podcast. Thank you for tuning in as always. Today, I have a very important topic to discuss. At least I think it's important. Today's episode is entitled, How Blacks Should Handle Community Injustice. Yes, today I want to talk about an incident that happened probably about a week or so ago with brother Tyrone Muhammad um, out there in Chicago. He's a uh, community activist and he decided to take upon himself to uh, shut down an Asian nail salon for disrespecting and mistreating black women. You know, which they usually do. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to actually play um, a couple of clips from that so you can kind of get a good, you know, background of what the incident that took place and some of the local news coverage as well. So let's get into it. I'm going to play these two clips back to back. First one is the incident, and then the second one is some of the local news coverage that kind of gives a little bit of background on what took place and some history of what happened and we'll break it all down after this. Thank you, 
nail shop didn't want to do an on-camera interview, but he says he doesn't believe he's done anything wrong. He says he was only trying to make sure customers paid for the services they received. But several community leaders say the proof is on tape told me to get the H out of his chair. He's not doing my nails. I changed my mind too much. Charmaine Jones says this cell phone video only captured a part of what happened to her Monday afternoon at the Color Nails near 83rd and Stewart. She says she was reaching back, trying to get her sister. As I was walking out of the door, uh, proceeded to push me and shove me and hit me and attempted to bite me. And another worker tried to grab the phone of the woman who was recording. I take a personal responsibility in uh, being a vanguard for my community. The next day, community activist Tyrone Muhammad responded with this, throwing bricks at the windows. He was immediately arrested and charged with misdemeanor criminal damage to property. Today, he defended his action, saying he's met with the owner before to address concerns at the salon, but nothing has changed. If you saw the tape, you'll see me going in, warning the sisters, telling them to clear this area. This is, um, we're pretty much uh, at this point, we're coming there in this place and any neighborhood store that disrespect our women and children. Activists have been staging a boycott and protest following a series of incidents in recent months at the nail salon. Jamal Green has shared videos showing the owner putting his hands on female customers. After grabbing the wallet of one customer seen here, the owner was taken into custody, but he tells WGN the case was thrown out. We're not about violence. Green says he had nothing to do with Muhammad's action, but wants to continue to put the focus on how black women are being treated at businesses where they spend their money. We were there to protest and boycott because we understand how to financially castrate a business because we just did it on 103rd and they've been shut down for two weeks. It's not just one situation at one nail shop. This is happening at multiple nail shops. I want justice served mainly, you know, and I want other young black individuals in the whole black community to know that we don't have to accept this type of behavior. Jones did file a police report for the incident this week and police say the case is open, but there have been no arrests. The shop is boarded up and closed for now. The owner tells us he plans to reopen tomorrow and he hopes to meet with community leaders to resolve this. Reporting tonight near 83rd and Stewart, Gaynor Hall, WGN News. First of all, I want to shout out this brother. Nothing but respect for what he did. Um, I have not, not, not a bad thing at all to say. I don't disagree one bit with the actions that he took upon himself to rectify a situation that needed to be rectified. So again, this brother is named Tyrone Muhammad and he is the executive director for an organization that goes by the name of Ex-Cons for Community and Social Change and the acronym for short is E-C-C-S-C -C -C. so he's out there in the local Chicago area um, he's not about picket signs he's not about marching he's about making some sort of constructive change by any means it's not about waiting around and throwing a hissy fit and getting all your uh, aggression emotions out and calling it a day no he you know he was like look he gave fair warning but let's just break it down so let's be fair uh, he he went inside the establishment. He was calm. He wasn't yelling. He wasn't cursing. He went inside and said, "Look, I, I, we didn't. I didn't told y'all. <laughs> I didn't told y'all I wasn't playing. So you thought this was a joke. This is the second time I had to come in here. So obviously, there's been multiple incidents that took place. And he was like, "Look." I'm tired of talking and, and talking is done. So you got two options, sisters. You could either get out or I need you to stand away from the windows. And if you look at the video, you just look around because they were 
filming inside of the salon before the actions took place. You had sisters just just standing around everybody, even the the people that work there, the owners. They're looking around like, oh, okay, uh uh-huh. They weren't taking them seriously. They that that was the mistake right there. They were not taking it seriously. They thought it was just some typical black folk just marching. We're going to have our signs. We's going to march and march and march and march until our feet hurt. He let you know from the get go. I ain't coming here for too much talking. I'm just giving this as a uh, a cautionary, uh, you know, just just take heed to what I'm saying. You don't have to believe me because I ain't about belief. I'm about action. So he calmly left, went outside, had his his bag of bricks prepped up and he started smashing up the windows. And all of a sudden, people started taking the incident a little bit more seriously. You know, there was a little bit of commotion from from some of the folks inside talking about, you know, oh, my gosh. And, you know, you, you could hear it in the background. And, you know, you, you do. You had a couple of sambos. You had a couple bed winches out there, too. No, don't, don't do that. You won't get arrested. He's telling you, he's like, hey. If it takes me to get arrested, then so be it. But I'm not going to sit around and just talk and march and do these ineffective things that aren't working. So after he finished breaking damn near all the front windows of this business, he calmly waited for the police. I don't know if somebody I don't know at what point. Someone called 911, but shortly after he was done, police showed up and he calmly put his hands in the air to show that he was unarmed and placed his hands behind his back because he knew he was going to get arrested and he did not care one bit. And you can hear the commotion, people cheering him on because. They knew that, hey, this brother was willing to go to jail to protect black women from being harmed and mistreated, especially from those that don't look like us. That's the big thing. We need to stop forcing ourselves around people that just want our business and don't care how they get it. They care nothing about us. They just want our money. So, you know, shout out to that brother. Uh, He has a GoFundMe page, which I don't blame him one bit to cover his legal fees. And in a matter of a couple of days, looks like it was a twenty thousand dollar goal. It's up to about at the time of me looking at this over thirty one thousand. So the people are behind him. People caught wind of this story. They're still donating. He's already reached his goal of what he needed and people are still donating. And I, you know, I suggest people donate more as much as they can. This is what you do to people that are willing to stick their necks out and get themselves in some sort of legal troubles uh, with these law enforcement officials to make sure that sisters are out here not being harmed and mistreated. Now, I mentioned some Sambos earlier. Let, let's talk about that briefly. Um, in particular, people that disagree with his methods. Um, there was a couple of rumblings, uh, you know, in the video. You, you, you may hear some people kind of in the background. Uh, and there's actually different videos too. There's a longer video that I saw of it was like 10 minutes almost. So it captured, you know, before the incident, while the incident was taking place. And after the brother Tyrone Muhammad got arrested, there was people kind of 
and still around the storefront area kind of discussing the incident there was a little bit of back and forth and all that type of stuff you had a couple of coons bucking their eyes like oh lord you gonna get us in trouble you going you should be doing that now eyes got wide as dinner plates it goes without saying these people do not speak for the black masses out here because you're scared of what's gonna happen or you's gonna get in trouble or you's gonna mess it up for us you know when they start talking like that you just gotta kind of let them burn themselves out or what have you but uh that that was one thing and i saw a youtube video uh, some sambo talking about he's a clown and uh why does he why is he doing this uh you know black women don't obviously they don't care so why it's weird for a, a black man to go into a nail salon and do all this i'm like okay th this is this is some little Sambo that has a YouTube following and looking at some of the comments. He has some suspected white supremacists comment and talking about, yeah, I don't get it and blah, blah, blah. And what is he doing? And so I, I kind of knew what that was and like, all right, and kind of didn't put too much energy into it. So that that was one aspect I, I noticed. And also in this extended video that i saw there was a a white patron that was in the nail shop as well um apparently she was or is disabled and she start explaining and uh talking about well you know i was in there i could have got hurt i'm look at me i'm disabled it's my community too um blah 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 you've got to hit my car and you know, suspected white supremacists is going to do what they're going to do. That that's, you know, fish going to swim, birds going to fly. They going to practice white supremacy if they are white supremacists. That goes without saying to me. It's some of these brothers and sisters that were kind of feeding into it, going back and forth with her like, no, no, you don't understand. If y'all don't shut up and just let this lady do whatever she doing and, you know, don't even feed into that bullshit. So that I did not agree with, but that had nothing to do with what the brother was doing. That was some other folks that were kind of starting to get into the emotions and whatnot. So that part, I didn't really co-sign, but the majority of the actions that took place during this incident, I, you know, I wholeheartedly agree with and I see nothing wrong. I see no wrongdoing. If it takes for that shop to get shut down, which apparently as of right now, it is shut down. It's boarded up. Then you know what? It is what it is. At the end of the day, I'm not going to sit here and say, well, there is more peaceful means of going through this. And he, it didn't have to resort to damaging property. If you needed to send a message that you're not playing, what out of the one, two scenarios you can come up with, what's going to be the most effective standing outside with some picket signs or smashing the storefront with bricks? I'm going to go with the brick option. And let me say this. I am not one of those individuals that uh, I'm not into the whole black men versus black women. I'm about the black collective. Yeah. Unless you are a Sambo, Coon, Bedwinch, sellout, somebody who is working against the black collective, whether that be U.S. or abroad, I'm for you. I don't care. It ain't, well, the black man first, and what about the black woman? It's about all of us. I'm lumping us all together and I don't feed into that black man versus black woman shit. To me, that's, you know, that propaganda, that that type of stuff is co-opted and fueled by the white supremacists to keep us off balance. Because if you have us running in circles, where are we going to go? If you running on the treadmill, you the same place you started is the same place you're going to stop. I don't care how fast you're running on that treadmill. 
you aren't going anywhere at the end of the day. And let's talk about these establishments that are non-black owned that are posted up in the black community. Let's not act like this is the only place in the U.S. that, you know, does all this type of stuff. No, no, let's not even go there. Let's not even do it to ourselves. At this point, it's almost a common business practice for them to harm and mistreat us. Almost comparatively to the white supremacists. It's like, hey, we want your money. We don't like you. That That's kind of the energy that they give you. And I can't I've lost count of how many incidents I've seen of nail shop and all these places that beauty supply stores, all these different type of places that disrespect black women, that assault black women, that actually put their hands on black women. I don't know if y'all remember, probably it was what towards the beginning of the year or the end of last year out in Oklahoma. There was a beauty supply store. There was a sister who got hands put on her by this Asian owner and she got bloodied up. And, you know, there, there was outcry in the community. And what the Asian owners did was, OK, we're going to have a sale. And you had a bunch of black women lined up. And let's be honest, those were bad winches. Those, those weren't no riders. You know, after something like that's going to happen, you're not going to have a rider out there in line at a place that assaults and disrespects your kind. So we have to be honest about that, too. There, There's just, you know, a collective of us out there. Not everybody what is what's that saying? Not everybody is that's just the skin folks, your kin folk. Right. So just because somebody looks like you doesn't mean they have the same ideology or interests you do. So back to that Oklahoma incident, um, you know, the line was formed up and there was a protest out there. You had some brothers out there, but they were on the peaceful side. They had picket signs and like, hey, sisters, don't go there. And one of the sisters rolled up on the brother, start cussing him out, start calling him all kind of things. And I'm like, he's out here. And he said it like, sister, we out here for you. And this, you know, this lost bed winch, this young bed winch, she she just so lost in herself. She doesn't see value in herself. She feels like if I can get something to have price, oh, I'm going to get it. So. Again, you have to realize that everybody that looks like us aren't about empowering. They're about what they can get out of it. And fuck you, nigga. So to wrap this up, my thoughts are the the picket signs. We, we got to be done with that. I know we're scared, you know, collectively to do something. That's why we march and we get our emotions involved and why is this happening but if you want something to change you're going to have to change the way you approach it so that's what the brother decided to do he knew full well he was going to get arrested for taking those actions that he decided to do and guess what it happened and guess what the community stood behind him they you know, posted money on his uh, GoFundMe page. The community showed their love and support for what this brothers did. And again, you will have a, a segment of folks that that look like us, but don't share our same interests. They should not be the spokes people for these type of incidents. They shouldn't be the ones on TV talking about he was wrong. He shouldn't do that. He a criminal for now for doing that. So hats off to his brother. You know, I'm I'm going to probably kick a couple of dollars to this thing, too, even though he's already reached the goal. But shoot, just as a show of support. And if you look at the donations, it's not even like a lot of money per person. 
We're not talking about a thousand dollars here. This is just a bunch of people, you know, five, ten, twenty dollars. That's all it takes. Sometimes you you got yourself thinking, oh, I ain't got money for this. I ain't got you got money for the shit that you want. But to show support for somebody who look like you, all of a sudden you ain't got no money. So, again, hopefully this will be a blueprint in the future. How to handle these incidents. Let's put down the picket signs and pick up a brick if necessary. All right. Well, having said all that, I am Ice of the Moor. This has been the Passion of Ice podcast. If you enjoyed what you heard today and have not heard any of the previous episodes, I encourage you to uh, dig into the archives. Check out some of the past episodes. There might be a thing or two or few that you will enjoy if you enjoy this. Um, you can also check the episodes out on a number of different streaming platforms. YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, or I think it's Apple Podcasts now. Basically, wherever you consume podcasts, you can find the Passion of Ice. So that being said, also, one more thing before I forget any comments, questions and concerns you want to reach out to me directly, please email me at ice the more at gmail dot com. That is ice the more at gmail dot com. I C E T H E M O O R. All right, y'all. Y'all have a good one. Stay safe out there. Make sure that the day is productive and prosperous for you. That being said, peace.